All right, welcome. Today we're going to dive into something we all do pretty much every day, but probably never think twice about. We're going to follow the secret journey of your data. So picture this. You find that perfect thing online. You punch in your details, you click that big buy now button, and then what? I mean, sure, a confirmation email magically appears, but between your click and that email, your data goes on this absolutely incredible high-speed adventure. So let's follow it. Every journey has to start somewhere, right? And for our data, that journey begins at the very moment of creation, that little spark where raw, boring facts are suddenly given a purpose. Okay, first things first, we've got to get one key distinction down. The words Maple Street all by themselves, that's just data. It's raw text, kind of meaningless on its own. But when you put it together as 123 Maple Street Anytown for shipping label, boom, it becomes information. It now has context, it has a job to do. And just like that, by filling out that form, we've created information. So we've created information. Now what? Well, the very first step on its journey is collection. And as it turns out, there are really two main ways this can happen. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. It's all about purpose. When you gave that online store your address, that was direct data. They collected it from you for one specific reason, to ship your stuff. But what if that store then sells a list of its customer addresses to a marketing company? Well, for that marketing company, it's suddenly become indirect data. It's the exact same data, but its purpose and its origin story have totally changed. In our little shopping trip, we gave them direct data through what's basically a questionnaire, right? I mean, that's all an online checkout form really is. This is probably the most common way we create data firsthand every single day. Our information has now been collected, but it has to travel across the internet, which is, let's be honest, a pretty wild and public place. It needs protection. It needs a bodyguard. And lucky for us, it has one. Its name? Encryption. What encryption does is it takes your perfectly readable address and your credit card number, and it just scrambles it into complete, unreadable gibberish. This is called ciphertext. The only one who can unscramble it is the intended recipient who has the secret key. To anyone else trying to peek, it's totally useless. You know, we actually see this in action all the time, right in front of our eyes. You know that little padlock icon you see next to the website address? Yeah, that's not just for show. That's your signal that a super powerful security guard, a protocol called SSL, or its modern cousin TLS, is on duty, actively scrambling everything you send and receive. So how does this all kick off? Well, before a single piece of your data gets sent, your browser and the website server do this thing. It's called a secret handshake. It's this super fast five-step dance where they prove to each other who they are, and most importantly, they secretly agree on a one-time use code, a session key that they'll use just for this conversation, and this one only. And this is where it gets really, really clever. That first handshake uses a slow but incredibly secure method called asymmetric encryption. It's got two keys, a public one for locking the box and a private one for unlocking it. They use this super heavy duty method for just one thing, to safely agree on the secret key for a much, much faster method called symmetric encryption. It's kind of like using a super secure armored truck just to deliver the keys to a ridiculously fast sports car. Okay. So, our data has made it, it's arrived at the server safe and sound, but hold on, before it gets filed away, it's got to pass a quality inspection. We can't have any junk data getting in, right? And this brings us to two words that sound super similar but are totally different, validation and verification. Think of it like this. Validation is the computer checking if the data follows the rules, like does your email address have an at symbol in it? That's a rule. Verification, on the other hand, is about checking for human error. When a site makes you type your new password twice, that's verification. It's checking that you didn't make a typo. So the computer just zips through these validation checks in an instant. Did you leave a required field blank? Nope. Is the date in the right DD slash MM slash YYY format? Yep. Did you accidentally try to order a thousand of something when the limit is 99? Check. It's all automated. And verification, that's all about catching our human mistakes. It's the system's way of just tapping us on the shoulder and saying, hey, are you sure this is what you meant to type? Before it goes ahead and processes everything. All right, this is it. Our data has been born, it's been collected, secured, and cleaned up. It's passed every test with flying colors. Now, it's finally time for it to get to work. So that purchase we made, that uses something called online processing. It happens almost instantly. 
In just a few seconds, the system processes your payment, confirms the order, and pings the warehouse to tell them to start packing your item. That instant feedback we all expect, that's online processing making it happen. But wait, our little transaction doesn't stop there. Later, probably at the end of the day, our purchase data gets tossed into a big digital pile with thousands of others. This is called a batch. And then the system processes that entire batch all at once, maybe overnight when things are quiet, to do things like generate sales reports. It's way more efficient, but definitely not instant. And then there's the final and fastest type, real-time processing. This is for systems where any delay is a huge problem. For our online store, the inventory system is the perfect example. The very moment your purchase goes through, the real-time system subtracts one from the stock count, which immediately changes what the very next customer sees. It's this constant, instant feedback loop. So when you lay it all out like this, you can really see the trade-offs. Batch processing is slow and cheap, which is perfect for stuff like payroll that doesn't need to be done this very second. Online processing gives us that near-instant feel we expect when we're shopping. And real-time? Well, that's the fastest and most expensive, and it's saved for mission-critical things like air traffic control, where a delay is just not an option. And just like that, our little piece of data has finished its secret journey. It started out as just a raw fact, was given meaning, traveled securely across the globe, passed all its quality checks, and was finally put to work to get our package to our door. A whole life story, all in just a couple of seconds. This whole journey, it happens dozens, maybe hundreds of times a day for every single one of us. But it leaves us with one pretty huge question to chew on. Once your data has been collected, processed, and stored on some company's server, once it's been potentially bought and sold, who really owns it? Something to think about.